The Honorable Member for Halifax Needham. Um, sorry, folks, I have a speech. Um... Keep the trend going here, please. <laughs> I am, I am going to speak. I am going to speak. Um, we welcome this amendment to the Crown Lands Act. It is indeed uh, something that was recommended uh, in the Leahy Review of Forestry Practices, um, and, and it is necessary. Um, at the same time, I'm, I'm going to take a bit of time about my, uh, I guess, my hopes and, and my trepidations around this act. Um, this, this was a recommendation of the Leahy Review. I am concerned that it has been um, more than two years uh, since this government accepted the recommendations of the Leahy Review. and. And, and this change, which is a change to the purpose clause of the Crown Lands Act, uh, certainly could have been brought forward in an earlier legislative uh, session. And in fact, um, in the 1920-2020 uh, uh, departmental business plan of um, I think it may have still been Department of Natural Resources at the time, though, frankly, I forget when that change happened. But, but in, a, in the 2019-2020 um, business plan, there was a, a stated commitment, intention, to do a review of the Crown Lands Act, the whole act, not just the purpose. Um, and, and so I am hopeful about that this change is coming forward. And also, I am, I am trepidatious, and I would suggest that I and, and my colleagues in the NDP caucus and many people across this province will be watching to see how that purpose translates into the change that many Nova Scotians want to see actually on the landscape of Nova Scotia. Um, we know and, and I would say that it is not, you know, it's not unique to this government, but we, we know that um, the Department of, of Lands and Forestry and the previous Department of, of Natural Resources has not always um, done the work that is given to it by law. And in fact, it's quite, um, quite sobering reading, uh, reading the, the case um, where the department was found to have not uh, followed the Endangered Species Act. Um, in the words of um, Justice Brothers, and this is just from the very first paragraph of that decision, when government is entrusted through legislation with duties and responsibilities but fails to discharge, discharge them, there must be recourse. And, and so our effort in this caucus to, um, to, both to take good advice that came to us from uh, people who showed up at the Law Amendments Committee, uh, to actually use that committee for the purpose for which it is intended, um, and to add some additional language uh, to uh, the change to the purpose is all in an effort to, to make this change more robust. Because we are actually trying to change um, change course in Nova Scotia, change course in, on our Crown lands in a significant way. Um, in fact, in, and, and I don't want to see the government in any way backslide um, on that commitment. In the, in the government response from 20, uh, 2019 to, um, to the Leahy report, the language was used that um, the key to Professor Leahy's report is the adoption of a new paradigm, ecological forestry. Uh, I remember the first time I heard the word paradigm used uh, and a, a paradigm shift. And I, I, I was um, attending a university uh, presentation where I was one of the people speaking. Um, but there were three of us, and it was it was um, 
would have been 1992, 1993, around the time that uh, global warming and climate change were first being talked about at the level of the UN. And, and one of the other presenters used this term of a paradigm shift. And I went through the entire presentation not knowing what, like, going, where, where's my dictionary? It was before, before cell phones were inv invented. Uh, kind of gleaming what it meant, but not actually having ever heard the word before. And, and it's a big change. It's a big change. Um, and, and we want to see uh, this government and the provincial government on behalf of all Nova Scotians I have the courage to, to actually make the change towards ecological forestry that is called for in the Leahy Report and that it, it committed to in its response to the independent review of forest practices in Nova Scotia. Um, we have seen backsliding before. We have seen widespread calls for change before. We have seen commitments to change before, and we have seen those abandoned. We saw um, the natural resources strategy, which came out of the Environmental Goals and Sustainable Prosperity Act, which engaged thousands of people, which put out, you know, not under one one party's banner, but under the, the province of Nova Scotia. It was the province of Nova Scotia's natural resources strategy with a plan for our resources for, from 2011 to 2020. And, and we saw significant parts of that just abandoned. The work just left, um, including a commitment to uh, a 50% reduction in clear cutting on Crown land. Um, it was the abandonment of that target and then forest practices that people could witness on the landscape that they are, they are traveling through and, and know well uh, that caused the outrage that resulted in the then premier in, in 2017 committing to the review of forestry practices. Um, and that was done in the budget address, which just came on maybe the eve or maybe two days before the writ drop. And, um, and so we, we've seen, this, we've seen this, this crest of concern and then the political reaction to the concern, but not always the follow through. And we need follow through. And, and I recognize from, gosh, talking to so many people that Changes. I mean, you can witness it in any in 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 many dimensions of our lives and of our society. That change is hard. Change is real hard. Um, but we are at a moment. Um, I would suggest, on, in terms of crown land management, in terms of that particular department, where change is required and it's overdue. It's been promised, and now it's time to deliver. Um, so. One of the changes, um, yeah, as part of, of that paradigm shift to ecological forestry um, that, is, that is difficult to, to live up to is, is actually re um, leaving, leaving forests standing while harvesting them, which is sort of the, the beauty of ecological forestry. Um, one forester I've spoken a, a lot with says, you know, you can, you can do an awful lot by providing a little bit of space and a little bit of light. Um, that's, what, that's what makes forests grow. So you can, you know, um, you, can, you can harvest uh, selectively, even using significant machines, um, and, and create some space and create some light and, and encourage regeneration and never leave the soil exposed. Never leave, um, never leave uh, an expanse of, of destruction uh, on the landscape. Um, and, and so that is the kind of paradigm shift that is called for in uh, the, the recommendations of the Leahy Review. And again, we're, we are more than two years past the government accepting them. And so that's why this past fall, as we approached uh, that two-year anniversary, why I, as the NDP spokesperson on lands and forestry, called for a moratorium on even-aged harvesting practices on Crown lands until 
significant um, milestones were reached in terms of implementation of the Leahy Report, including adoption of the new civil culture guides. Um, and, and I'll share, like, I know I'm not. I know I'm not an expert. I know I'm not. And in fact, if I, if I wanted to be an expert, even after, even after devoting myself for, for decades, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not by nature a person who, who is like 100% certain that I'm right or will project myself as more certain than I am. Um, it's just not not some a way of being that I'm I'm all that comfortable with. And so I really um, hesitated and tried to double check and um, verify that we were at the point to call for that moratorium. But I I I did feel that we were that that people across the, the province were losing, um, losing confidence that the change that they knew was necessary was going to happen. And, and then just very, a very short time after we made that call, I, I realized um, that in fact, you know, seven members of the minister's own advisory committee on forestry within, within weeks of us um, had made the same call. I didn't, I didn't know that at the time. And just to, to quote a little bit of their letter that they wrote to the minister, they said that they had learned that uh, mills in the West Fork Consortium in Southwest Nova Scotia currently have five years of harvest plan approvals in place. This means the practices that Leahy rejected will, main the, will remain the dominant treatments on forested crown lands for many years after the government accepted the recommendations of the independent review of forest practices in Nova Scotia. We have not been able to get a commitment from this government at absolute clarity that when they adopt the civil culture guides, that it will then apply to all cuts from that day forward. And so we are, like many Nova Scotians, watching the, well, I mean, I'm not, but countless citizens are, in, devoting so much time to watching the, the Harvest Map viewer, to looking at uh, the, sorts of, uh, the sorts of cuts that are approved. This is, this is a list of, of the cuts that are, you know, are open for comment right now in Annapolis County, in Halifax County, in Queens County. And the majority of them are variable retention cuts. Variable retention uh, cuts are the sorts of, uh, are, is the, the sort of clear cutting, to use a not very technical term, that um, is allowed to happen on Crown lands with the interim guidelines that were announced in December 2018. Um, interim guidelines. And so they, they, are, they are significant cuts where a portion of that, uh, of that, that plot uh, will not be cut. And, and that's better than it was. It is significantly better than it was. But if, if you, you know, I don't know, picture a football field and 20% and of it is, is left forested and the rest of it is clear cut, we know that there are significant, there are going to be real challenges to implementing ecological forestry on, on, that, on that whole football field. Um, because 70% of it, the soil is exposed. Um, the, the, you know, the, there, there isn't the, the regeneration hasn't started to take hold by leaving that space and that light. Um, it's the, the ecosystem is is damaged, and so to then uh, s say, okay, well now, I don't know, in 2022, we're now going to do ecological forestry. It it becomes far less um, viable. Um, so the you know these are a couple of the reasons why. Um, why we're concerned, where, why we are continuing to join our voices with many other people who are calling for a moratorium on even age harvesting until the, the civil culture guide is indeed um, guiding all, uh, all cuts on crown land. And it's also uh, why, 
I hope my, my comments have given a sense as to, as to why we moved some amendments to the Crown Lands Act and why we are glad and, and I'm personally gratified and, and, and grateful that the government was open to those, um, to those amendments. So one of those amendments um, adds consideration of climate change to the many different values and consideration uh, that the department will, uh, will consider uh, for its management of Crown Lands along with along with recreation, along with um, you know, cultural values, along, along with economic values. Um, and, and also why uh, we were able to add an, another sort of subclause to the purpose that says that the, that the department will, will engage in land use planning in order to pursue all of, all of the other purposes, all of the, all of the different considerations. Um, and, and that goes back to, again, to Leahy, because the, the recommendation is that ecological forestry will be the, the dominant way of doing forestry going forward. But there will also be high production forestry on, on certain pieces of land, on certain parts of the landscape. But at this point, again, more than two years later, we don't know where those will be. And, and some people would argue that high production forestry is sort of what we've done up until now, assuming that we're always gonna be able to like move on to another piece of land that hasn't been touched in a long, long time. Um, and so we've kind of used up crown land for one time high production forestry instead of practicing ecological forestry where we are continually kind of coming back to, the, to, uh, to some of the same landscape, but not ever leaving it um, barren. Uh, and so, uh, including, um, yeah, including a reference to land use planning in the purpose clause, I hope is significant, and, um, and adding consideration to clim of climate change to the Crown Lands Act, I certainly, I certainly feel like could be significant. Um, and, and for me, uh, yeah, you know, it's hopeful, because we should actually be considering climate change in, in pretty much every single aspect of the way that we govern uh, Nova Scotia at this juncture. Um, at this juncture. Um, a, a last thing I'll say about, uh, about uh, climate change in regards to the Crown Lands Act is that I, you know, I think we're, we're at the point where we also have to be um, you know, really looking hard and being honest uh, with ourselves and, and with our trading partners uh, in, in conversations around the use of biomass for energy. I, I asked some questions about this to a recent, um, at a recent uh, committee meeting. You know, have we ever done a land use, um, a, a land use, uh, not, sorry, not a land use, like a, a, a life cycle assessment of whether it is true that we can consider uh, biomass uh, for energy as a renewable energy source. Um, at, at, you know, we know it's been written about quite widely in scientific journals that there was, there was like a, a, a calculation error um, initially when, uh, when biomass was, was designated uh, a renewable resource. Um, it was considered to be neutral if you, if you uh, cut it down because if you cut down trees to use for biomass because the trees would grow back. Um, and, and it was also, and it, therefore it was considered neutral when it went up the smokestack. But in fact, it, like there, there, there are greenhouse gas emissions um, that come out of those smokestacks when you're burning biomass uh, that are currently not calculated uh, to the best of my knowledge, and and also the point has now been made that that the the time frame during which we need to seriously address climate change is actually much shorter than the time frame that it would take for that tree to, you know, reincorporate the same amount of carbon again in a tree. Uh, trees trees take longer to grow. 
to, to uh, you know, to, to significant size than we have right now to uh, address climate change. So, so that's another aspect of the work of the department of, and the work of uh, the Leahy Review of Forestry that I, I hope will proceed in part guided by this purpose of the Crown Lands Act. Um, I want to... I want to say uh, just a last thing again about, well, two last things. Uh, one is that the point has been made, and I think it's important to remember as the department uh, and, and the government um, commits and recommits to the Leahy Review um, and does not backslide, that the Leahy Review and the Leahy recommendations are a compromise. They are the compromise. If we compromise on implementation of Leahy, we're not, we're not making the change that we need to make. The, the compromise is baked in to the triad approach. Um, and then the last thing I want to say, and I've said it before outside this legislature to people who were um, uh, raising their voices uh, earlier in this session, and I've said it uh, you know, in different parts of the province when I've met with people, um, I, wanna, I wanna acknowledge the work and the stewardship of many citizens. The Crown land is, is, is our collective land. It's, it's, it's our common land. And many Nova Scotians, and, you know, it, generously and also because of, of a lack of confidence in, this, in the governments, in the department stewardship of Crown Land, are keeping an eye and putting a lot of time into that. Um, and I want to acknowledge that because it's, it's significant. It has resulted in, in changes, including, including that political move to call for the Leahy Review you know, years after the natural resources strategy had been effectively abandoned. Um, it's important. It's important. And I really appreciate, uh, I really appreciate people's time and effort and caring. And I really appreciate all the learning that I have done as, um, as our caucus's uh, spokesperson on this file. So thank you very much. Thank you.